As we look at the last topic for round two here, fluid dynamics, we're going to look at external flow again. Uh, this time we're going to talk about characteristics of boundary layers and the way that Reynolds number affects flow regimes. And like the last video, this is a conceptual thing. So we want to put this in your brain as a thing to start giving you intuition about what fluids do, uh, but there won't be a whole lot of calculations to perform directly. So let's start with, let's scroll up here, sorry, uh, the idea of a thin, or uh, of a boundary layer forming over a flat plate. And so the flow may approach at some upstream velocity we're calling u infinity here. That's kind of standard notation. So this is some uniform profile hitting this plate. And as soon as we touch it, we know the no slip condition causes the fluid touching it to stick and not move anymore. And as we move down the plate, what happens is that information gets communicated farther and farther up. And so we get this little region down here that's been affected by viscosity. And if we move far enough downstream, we'll see that that region has gotten much thicker. In fact, we have this thing called the boundary layer thickness, which I've drawn with this dashed line, uh, which is usually called delta. One of the weird things about external flow compared to internal flow is what causes turbulence. Remember, in an internal flow, it was over a certain Reynolds number, it happened. Well, that's the same for external flow. But with internal flow, if it was going to be turbulent, it started right away. Right? If we had a diameter that caused the Reynolds number to be uh, greater than 2100 or 4000, 4, uh, we would get turbulent flow immediately in that cylinder or in that pipe. With external flow, all flows will start out laminar, and if you move far enough down the surface, it transitions and then becomes turbulent. And there's still this average boundary layer profile that looks like the other one, just stretched out a bit. Uh, but if you looked at it in any instant in time, you'd see all kinds of chaotic motion that only in the average looks like this. So for external flows, we tend to say that the critical Reynolds number is about 500,000. And so when you reach that point, you can assume that it's transitioning or even turbulent. Uh, and we calculate it using the distance along the surface rather than some fixed dimension. And so the Reynolds number changes as you move downstream on this plate. Other things that we do is we say that the boundary layer thickness is the height where y, uh, the height above the plate here where we've reached 99% of the free stream. You know, this thing's going to infinitely small deltas, and so it gets hard to tell when you've reached that point. And so we've just said, well, 99% is the answer. There's an interesting hap thing happening here, though. Think about this in terms of mass flow. This region of slow flow is essentially a mass flow deficit. There's less flow happening through this region than there would have been if it were in viscid. And so that brings us to a concept that's kind of neat, which is called the displacement thickness. And what it basically says is that there is some height we could shift the, the plate here by uh, that would give us the same mass flow as reality for an inviscid flow. And a lot of times we use tricks like this uh, to model viscous flows uh, using inviscid techniques just by shifting the surface and pretending as though the body was slightly larger than it really was. Just like we have a mass flow deficit, we have a momentum flow deficit. If you think about it, there's less momentum down in that bottom region. And so in the same way that we could calculate this offset for mass flow, we can calculate one for momentum flow, and this would be the one we'd want to shift the surface by if we wanted to find forces.